Today on Earth Focus, the risks of natural gas development in the Marcellus Shale, from toxic chemicals in drinking water to unregulated dumping of potentially radioactive waste. Are the health consequences worth the economic benefits? Coming up on Earth Focus. It's called Marcellus Shale, and it contains enough natural gas to supply all U.S. gas needs for 14 years. But gas development here can be a catastrophe in the making. Toxic chemicals and methane gas seep into drinking water. And now, experts fear something worse, radioactive radium in waste products. The gas business may be booming, but at what price for people? Britain's Ecologist TV explores the social and ecological consequences of gas extraction in the Marcellus Shale in this original investigative report. This is Bradford County, northeastern Pennsylvania. This previously quiet corner of America is now at the center of a rush for natural gas extracted through a new drilling technology called hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking. But as the ecologist discovered, fracking is a high-risk process that threatens to both destroy the environment and wreck lives. It makes me mad. It makes me very mad. Because my life is over without my water. There was just like this red, nasty water just coming, just oozing out the side of the mountain, just the side of the hill. And now hydraulic fracturing is heading for Europe. The UK, Poland, France and Germany are all next in the frac firing line. This is a picture postcard part of America. But beneath these rolling hills lies a seam of gas-rich rock called Marcellus Shale. But the shale gas is far from easily accessible. The process itself is that you drill down uh, a few thousand feet into a layer of very dense shale, turn the well horizontally, go out um, and perform some other operations. Eventually you uh, set off charges that blow holes in the pipe and then you fill up the pipe with a liquid and the intent is basically to get sand back in the cracks of the rock to hold it apart so the gas will flow. Gas drilling sites, or frac pads as they are known, have begun to appear all over the countryside, but these are just the tip of the iceberg. Professor Tony Ingrafia is one of the world's leading pioneers of fracture mechanics. Uh, the fact is that Pennsylvania is three years into a 30-year large-scale industrial development. There are fewer than 2,000 Marcellus wells in Pennsylvania right now, but they're drilling them at the rate of four to five per day, and the rate at which they're being drilled is increasing. The industry intends to drill between three and 5,000 wells per year for the next 30 years in Pennsylvania, and if they get their way in New York. With many farmers struggling to remain profitable, the large royalty payments offered for land means that many are readily selling off their mineral rights. For others, there is also the promise of new jobs. And on a national level, it is argued that shale gas is a step towards energy independence. But in the rush to drill, concerns about the potential risks of fracking are being swept aside. When I first heard about shale drilling, uh, it sounded like a pretty good idea. The thing that really got me interested uh, and concerned <clears throat> was I found out that under the proposed regulations for New York State, you could drill a gas well 150 feet from this river or the lake that feeds it, uh, which is the water source for this village. Um, and that's just insane. One of the first problems observed in communities close to intensive fracking sites has been the contamination of domestic water supplies. The ecologist spoke to families who have been unable to drink water from the tap since the gas companies started fracking on land close to their homes. And I didn't tell Ronnie anything about it until probably a couple days later because it, it got worse. I thought, maybe this will go away. I don't know what it is, but it didn't. And I said to him, I said, you know, we have a problem with our water. Water is a commodity. You might not think it is when you have it and it's good, but when you lose it, it's gone. You'll never get it back. Like we would take a glass of water out of the tap and it would have like an oil base on the top. You could smell it. 
would smell like diesel fuel it or some enough. kind of oil thing. You know, I, I used to go to my sink and get a glass of water. I can't do that anymore. I, I have to put lotion on my hands three times a day from using the watery, even wash my dishes or wash my clothes or anything. Meanwhile, increased levels of methane gas in water supplies have been reported in areas of intensive drilling. This is the water that's in my well, and supposedly I'm supposed to be drinking it. One of the key problems with the fracking process is its reliance upon huge volumes of water that are combined with an array of harmful chemicals. Carolyn Knapp is an organic farmer. I don't believe that they should be allowed to put chemicals into my ground, chemicals that are not allowed by my certification to be put in the ground, um, chemicals that I feel can do harm to my family, to the people around me, and I don't feel, I feel violated. None of those chemicals are potable. Uh, you know, methanol, hydrochloric acid, ethylene uh, glycol, it's about a half of 1% of the fracking fluid is a chemical, or is it really a cocktail of chemicals? And, but, but think of, but do the math on that. That means that that's 5,000 gallons per well is chemicals, or toxic chemicals that goes in. So if there's eight wells per pad site, that's, that's 40,000 gallons of toxic chemicals. And we're losing farms far too quickly as it is, and to have one more, um, circumstance that makes us lose the farms quicker is all the quicker that they'll be gone. There will be no more small family farms. The rush for gas has had other effects on the local community. Small towns have become clogged with gas industry trucks. I have to say the days of having a nice conversation sitting out in front of the diner are long gone. Main Street's noisier and louder now than ever as a result of the large trucks that the industry requires, they run nonstop 24 hours a day through town, and yeah, the noise is louder than ever. Whilst the increase in traffic represents an inconvenience for local people, the high volume of trucks point to far more serious problems. Once the chemicals are injected and the fracturing process is complete, a large percentage of that fluid comes back up. So we have purposely polluted large quantities of fresh water with chemicals that do not belong in the human environment. And now we have the responsibility, the industry and the landowners have a responsibility to dispose of them properly. But we're talking enormous quantities. Whereas energy-rich Texas has over 11,000 disposal wells, the temperate geography of Pennsylvania means that only a few exist, hardly enough to cater for the thousands of wells planned in coming years. But the safe disposal of frac fluid is not the only concern. The amount of fluid that's running around out there, literally, in tanker trucks, you know, thousands of tanker trucks, um, is such that one tanker truck going off the road uh, with, with fracking chemicals in it into a river would pretty much wipe it out. Th this is like taking that rough and tumble, uh, highly industrialized activity and plopping it right down the, in the Cotswolds. You know, maybe not such a good idea. Truman Burnett's retirement dream has been destroyed after a gas industry truck spilled a small amount of polluted frac water onto his property. My wife had some health problems and this was her uh, recovery area and uh, we had a little bit of heaven. The only thing you heard at nighttime here was your heartbeat. Now it's, it's just totally devastated. And the water dumped out down off their pad down across my land into my pond through the pond and into the wetland here alongside me and what it did it killed the pond uh, killed the fish killed everything in the in the pond no frogs no turtles nothing our, our drinking water in our house has high concentrations of lead uh, they've recommended it or they've told us not to drink it and don't bathe in it from our heaven now it's turned into our hell the estimate of the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Preservation is one serious environmental concern for every 150 wells drilled to date. You do the math. If we're talking hundreds of thousands of wells, we're doing hundreds or thousands of spills. That's called cumulative, cumulative impact. 
So it goes to the heart of your question, why are you not seeing all these things yet? Because the cumulative impact is accumulating. Come back in 10 years. The ecologist met with an ex-gas industry employee who described a spill on a site that he worked on. Some of the sites are well regulated, yeah, where DEP and OSHA and stuff like that, where they're right on them and stuff, yeah, they're well regulated. But the rest of the 95% of them, where they're not going to go out to the site and look at them, no. <laughs> no, they're not well regulated. Some of them are real bad. I've seen chemicals come out of the side, literally the side. It looked like the mountain was bleeding. They had, the, they had it looks like a plateau, they had the pad here, and they have like the barrier fence around it. And there was just like this red, nasty water just coming, just oozing out the side of the mountain, just the side of the hill. So <laughs> they're not doing something right. But a toxic cocktail of chemicals is not the only worrying component in frac wastewater. Critics argue it could contain far more dangerous substances. These shale deposits are rich in radium, radium-226. The level of radium in the Marcellus is about 267 times the safe disposal amount, meaning it'll kill you. So uh, there's also there's, there's anecdotal an evidence that, that these frac fluids will leach uranium out of these shale deposits. There's also radon in these shale deposits. So uh, in addition to the fracking fluid, which we know is toxic, the frac flowback leaches radium out of the shale. The radium is carcinogenic, that, and that's something that's being introduced to the surface in a spill uh, that wasn't there before. As the profile of the potential dangers of hydraulic fracturing grows, both public and experts are becoming increasingly concerned by the rapid expansion of fracking. But the gas industry have hit back with expensive ads, PR campaigns, and high-level lobbying. It's the cost-benefit of BS, of PR, of ads, and payoffs to politicians is extraordinary. The return on investment of paying off a politician, running an ad, discrediting critics, is it's, it's one of the best investments that the industry can make. Although they declined an opportunity to speak on camera, a spokesperson for the Marcella Shale Coalition, which represents the gas industry, told the ecologist that gas extracted from fracking is both safe and a panacea for America, offering a fuel that is both a cleaner and a more secure choice than relying on foreign energy supplies. But Professor Ingrafia disagrees. Because in general, in the usage framework, Oil and gas are not interchangeable. Petroleum is largely used for transportation. Natural gas is largely used for heating and for industrial activity. So until you can show me a plan as part of a national energy plan to transform our transportation system in the United States to one that uses natural gas, all right, that argument is specious. Natural gas burns cleaner than any other fossil fuel, but it is not cleaner in its life cycle. Studies that are being done at Cornell University right now that are going to be released soon in peer-reviewed journals will show conclusively that the life cycle cost in terms of carbon dioxide emission and methane emission from the development of gas from unconventional sources like shale is at least as dirty as coal. Professor Ingrafia is also concerned about unregulated fracturing practices spreading around the world. Not only do we now have a technology that has exceeded our regulatory capacity, we have a government saying something that's ahead of the, reg of the technology. So I'm, I'm really concerned about people in Europe, India, Asia, Africa, uh, that they're going to jump into this again too soon without understanding completely what the implications of this use of technology are on environment and human health. But despite the concerns of experts from across the spectrum, Fracking in Pennsylvania is set to continue. Ralph Kisberg, a campaigner against the gas industry, offers a sober assessment. You've got to realize the vast majority of people here think it's wonderful. They think there'll be jobs, they think they'll be able to keep their families here, they'll be able to pay for education. Um, but we find, as you've seen when you talk to people, that all is good on paper, but when things happen that ruin the value of your property, ruin the health of your family, and it, that all goes out the window. With hydraulic fracturing set to expand across Europe in the coming years, how governments respond to this new technology will be crucial. 
but the lure of a new domestic energy source and the promise of jobs in regions starved of investment may prove too powerful a combination to oppose. Potential benefits need to be balanced against acceptable risk. For that, you need facts, like what's really in the 5 million gallons of fluid, including the 75,000 gallons of chemicals used to frack a single well. Under the Bush administration's Energy Policy Act of 2005, companies didn't have to tell you. However, in September 2010, eight companies responded to an EPA request for information. It took a subpoena to get Halliburton, the company that pioneered fracking, to respond. Fracking chemicals are linked to bone, liver, and breast cancers, gastrointestinal, circulatory, respiratory, developmental, as well as brain and nervous system disorders. And they are in frack waste and may find their way into drinking water and air. And it gets worse. Today, waste from Pennsylvania gas wells Waste that may also contain unacceptable levels of radium is routinely dumped across state lines into landfills in New York, Ohio, and West Virginia. New York does not require testing waste for radioactivity prior to dumping or treatment. So drill cuttings from Pennsylvania have been dumped in New York, Shimung, and other counties since 2009, and liquid waste is shipped to treatment plants in Auburn and Watertown, New York. It is ironic that New York State, the first in the nation to put a temporary hold on fracking pending a safety review, nevertheless allows other states to dump frack waste within its boundaries. How radioactive is this waste? Experts are calling for testing and are concerned about the contamination of the drinking supply of major population centers, including New York City. With the gas production boom underway in the Marcellus Shale, and plans for some 400,000 wells in the coming decades, the cumulative impact of dumping potential lethal waste without adequate oversight is a catastrophe waiting to happen.